Now, the allegation is just mind-blowing that Nigeria's president, Bola Tinubu, allegedly forged the certificate he submitted to the Electoral Commission, INEC. It's a topic that's at the top of the news agenda here and is by far the most politically and legally divisive matter right now in this country. At issue, the deposition given by the registrar of Chicago State University, Caleb Westberg, which suggests that the certificate submitted to INEC by Bola Ahmed Tinubu was not produced by the university and did not originate from them. That deposition's been seen by a host of analysts, lawyers and journalists, and many of them appear to agree that Mr. Westberg's words support the school of thought that suggests the certificate submitted to INEC Mr. by Mr. Tirubu was forged. But many others say they've looked but simply can't find anywhere in that deposition where Mr. Westberg suggested Mr. Tirubu forged his certificate or even alluded to it. So, in those disputed circumstances, all eyes are now on the Supreme Court. Will it be the means by which a potential constitutional and political crisis can be averted? Yes. Certificates issued or released by Chicago State University to the lawyers of Alahaji Atiku Abubakar. These are the documents. One, that Bola Ahmed Tinubu forged the certificate he presented to INEC. That's one. Two, that the qualifying certificate from Southwest College to Chicago State University bears a female indicating that that document does not belong to Bola Ahmed Tinibu. Then, the same document, oral deposition, says that the A, Bola A Tinibu, is Ahmed. But the NYC certificate, Bola Ahmed Tinibu, submitted to INEC has Adekunle. I don't know where the Adekunle and the Ahmed emerged from. From the Senate authorities, the Supreme Court has held that they can accept a party to adduce fresh evidence as long as certain conditions are met. And from what transpired in the proceedings in US court, that condition has already been met. So as we speak, our law is very clear that a party at fault cannot be allowed to enjoy the fruit of his uh, illegality. Well, for their legal analysis, I'm joined now in the studio by Adeni Akintala, who is a senior advocate of Nigeria and a legal counsel to the APC, and Mike Mbanetha, who is a constitutional lawyer. Thank you very much indeed to both of you for coming in, and thank you especially because I know you've had a very busy day, as have you. Thank you. Um, let, let me just start by getting your reaction to what you just heard there. That was the uh, conference held earlier today by Atiku Abubakar, and that was a lawyer who is acting, uh, I suppose, on behalf of them, uh, giving their own summary of what the case is that they're making against Bola Ahmed Tinubu. In the first place, I never listened to the uh, press conference or press briefing. And uh, of course, I've been busy this morning. In fact, I've been written our briefs, the result of the same case. And I wouldn't know because the gentleman that showed his face now, I never knew him as one of the counsel handling the matter for either of the parties. Thirdly, I wouldn't know which case he has ever handled in his life, whether he has ever handled any constitutional matter, any election petition in his life. Because what we have been having over the months have been comments from even mechanics, painters, every dictum and Harry come around to comment on issues they knew nothing about. And that has been the, the bane of our own democracy because our 
judicial system is becoming too media driven. And I've said this several times that uh, that is why you don't see us in television stations. If this is not related to issues that touches our clients, I would not be here. So when I was director, to say, okay, let me go there and listen to them. Because like I did say, I said I was going to set the gun rules. I will not sit down here and listen to anybody mananing any judge or insinuating any form of bias against any judge or justice. I well, I can assure you that's I, not I, what I we're here today. I, I, I won't countenance that. Mm. Secondly, the allegation is, is made. I wouldn't know whether I, you know the meaning of forgery at all. Who is alleging that? I've gone through the depositions he was referring to. There was nowhere, no say, and I challenge him to point at a particular sentence. Just spoke of forgery. Well, just in to, just in, to in clarify. In any case, just, just a moment. Right, sure. He really went further to say nobody will be allowed to benefit from his illegality. At what stage have they discovered these illegalities? At what stage? That was not before the Court of Appeal. We well, we had the petition. That was not discussed. So I was coming here. I was going through their brief of arguments. Mm. There was nowhere. Where this issue was even mentioned in their brief. That was not conversed at the court below. It was never raised. So we are waiting for them. Mm. See, for those who went on for your, for your discovery, all we can say is good luck to them. They hold the money, their money, is their time. But for us, we are waiting for them. Well, just to be very clear, the, the deposition, what it said was that the, the university spokesman, the, the registrar, said that the documents that were submitted did not originate from them. That was, that it was clear. Yeah. They don't keep such documents. And what we refer to, we will rather as diplomatic model, the university issues degrees. The so-called uh, diplomats are for ceremonial uh, entertainment. And not many students bother to collect theirs. So when the PDP candidate and PDP, they were the ones that presented that. They wanted it certified. They said they could not certify it. It's because it does not emanate from them. They could not even read between the lines. Yeah, but you, you would agree, and I'll come to you in a minute, Mr. Benefit, but you would agree that a university, I mean, I went to university I in America. I did. Yeah, I mean, you would well, agree I, I, that, that I a university, when it gives out, yes. um, when it, it authorizes someone yes. to publish its diplomas and certificates on its behalf, those things have guidelines. I mean, you, you can't do. just publish anything. You see, they do. They they, they have to be, the signatures have to match, match, the colors have to match, the font has to match what the university says is the way it's going to be. So if, if it goes, I mean, the, I, I'm not taking sides with anybody. I'm simply we saying We're not this for always taking sides. Anyway, we've, no, no, we, 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 we don't we take sides. It. We know That's that. The one but thing I did we say do that do if it's take sides. that you are going to intervene, I won't stay here. I told you, your staff. Mm. Yes, well, we're very glad that you came. But let me come to you, um, Mike and Bonifo, and thank you for your patience. Um, you're a constitutional lawyer. Will the Supreme Court allow new evidence on this matter to be introduced? I understand there's a precedent to suggest that it has the power to do so. Well, um, <clears throat> in regards to that, the Supreme Court has right to accept or not to accept new evidence. There are precedents to accepting or not accepting new facts or new evidence. And Three of such facts, one, the evidence sought to be tendered newly has to be something that initially originated from the lower court. Secondly, it must have basis and reason why you want to tender such evidence at that later stage. And finally, what do you intend to do with the evidence you sought to tender? Now, when it comes to the issue of new evidence, it is such a ridiculous thing and an attempt for whoever to incite the populace to begin to malign judges on issues they know nothing about. At what point did they discover forgery? Because same certificate has been tendered even when the president 
was a governor some 20 years ago. So where the issue of the CSU says that, oh, we didn't issue this certificate of uh, this uh, the certificate tendered to INEC does not conform with what we issue. Question, what do they issue? Is it possible that same certificate issued for a degree, degree person will be the same certificate issued to a diploma holder? The answer is no. There are so many documents flying, media trials going left, right, and center. I'm not holding brief for anybody. If, if, not, if for anything, I will respect the senior advocate who is seated here before you. Now, <clears throat> when the CSU says we don't keep record of diploma, that says it all. It creates a very big lacuna. And again, forgery is a very serious allegation, which neither the CSU nor Atiku, nor even the president can say yes or, 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 not, or not. Reason being that it will not be subjected to investigation mm. which lands within the purview of the Nigerian police, as the case may be, as it affects Nigeria, and the American police, as the case may be, as it affects America. Now, the issue in both ways is what will either party do with the results they find. Even if they find out today without so conceding that result, the, the document is forged, it's still a useless a, a, a matter to be talked about at the Supreme Court. Because even for the Supreme Court to do anything with the document, they have to consider that acid test of repugnancy. How does it mm. benefit the populace? Do you want, what do you want to achieve with the, the, the document you're tendering? It, it, it's such an embarrassing thing to me, if you ask me my mind, I think it's an inciting statement. Right. Well, let me ask you, um, senior advocate of Nigeria, you, you have a wealth of experience when it comes to legal issues in, in this country. Following on on what um, um, Barrister Banefo was saying there, can an appellant introduce new evidence on appeal at the Supreme Court if that evidence can have material and fundamental relevance to the appeal? Well, let me first of all... I mean, just wearing your yes, cap as a yes, senior advocate let, let's without me, affiliation. Let me first of thank my landed friend here. He captured mm. the video, the situation, except that he left one issue out. There are four hurdles for anybody, in ordinary cases, ordinary civil cases, mm. not in election petition, you understand. In any civil case, you have four orders to cross to prefer fresh evidence. It's not a tea party. It's something that is not done ordinarily. There are a few precedents here and there that, but those ones, even those ones that were done, that were considered, it was it showed that the appellants in those cases had no access to those documents, to the fresh evidence they want to. What have been, the, been, the, been waiting for? They were at the petition tribunal. They had 21 days to file their petition. Nobody alluded to this throughout. And like you did say, what is the utility value? Just continue, like you said. What is the utility value to, get, to be derived from this what this expedition, so to say. So, but like I did say, we are waiting for them. But as, as of today, as I speak, there was nothing of that before the Supreme Court and what they have filed. Nothing of that. Not even the lie. They need help, please. What, what they stand to gain, I don't know. But we are waiting for them. And I will not sit down here and be putting on the table the antidote we have, to, we have at our disposal. We are mm -hmm. waiting for them. Well, you, you, you have to... Don't forget yeah. that the same TDP candidate made similar inquiries about pres uh, President Jonathan. People have forgotten this. And neither the University of Port Harcourt nor the part that be released the details of the PhD of Dr. I brought it to some of my... The letter from the presidency and from the uh, University of Portugal is here in this today. Because people don't read. There's still so much 
in social media. Mm. This thing happened not quite 10 years ago. It is not strange. Obama to block similar inquiries. And so was President Trump. See, it's not new. But what do you stand to give? This question to me. Somebody was talking about uh, of embarrassment. Anything, our, our um, political terrain is full of, well, of course, we're in this country, anything goes. Because if not. Well, that's what worries people. <laughs> we're in the country, of anything <laughs> if goes. If anything goes. But, but for me, I'm not embarrassed. Mm. And neither is any of our clients embarrassed because we are prepared for them. We've watched them doing that before. They did it against President Wally. Speaking about uh, about uh, certificates, and the first schedule of the country is very clear. You don't need to even need, you don't even need a Swiss to become president of Nigeria. Mm. So what are they talking about? But obviously, if something is submitted, then that raises if questions I, about no, what you submitted. It depends on what you intend to submit at the very, at the at that point in time. Mm. If you have so many certificates that are at your dis disposal. I have several certificates, three university degrees. I can decide to submit one, I submit all. And our electoral act doesn't even demand that for many candidates. If you are working for a period of 10 years, and you have primary school leasing certificates, you are qualified to do it. So what are you talking about? Yeah, but the law also says, doesn't it, and I'll come to you in a minute, but I, I just want to tap the vast knowledge of, of the senior advocate of Nigeria before I tap your vast knowledge. You can't ask the question of being a senior advocate of Nigeria. But, but seriously, being, I mean, being, being a man who is articulated enough, who has undoed so many election petitions. Absolutely. That's why we, 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 we start to benefit that time. from your yeah. assessment. But, but the law does say, though, that if something untoward is introduced as a certificate that there are penalties for that doesn't it yes of course but the question is the same law is that time lag we don't wish to question such mm. and people have forgotten that there's a time lag for everything and we are talking of election petition we are not even talking of regular civil cases mm. election petition is generous it's a class of in a class of his own what is applicable in the civil process? It's not, might not be applicable right. in election petition. Okay, it's not something you just rake up because yeah. you want to embarrass somebody. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, I, I understand that. But you, you're a constitutional lawyer. You, 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 you know the thing like the back of your hand. Um, coming off the back of what the senior advocate of Nigeria is saying, for you to go to that Supreme Court, as you were telling us earlier, would he or she have to prove that because he was saying that why did it take them so long i mean you know they went to the tribunal they could have gone and done all this what if they go to the supreme court would he or she have to prove that they had difficulty in procuring the evidence at the outset when the petition was filed because obviously in this instance the evidence was coming from a foreign jurisdiction okay um the Electoral Act in Section 134 is clear. First of all, when you submit a result or whatever document to INEC, the essence of submission is for INEC to publish it for open challenge, mm. which they so do. That is, even at the primary stage. They were put on notice. Even at the primary stage, INEC puts everybody on notice. Now, it further gives grounds under Section 137, uh, 1J of the Constitution of grounds upon which you can petition a candidate. And one of such grounds falls under the issue of forgery. Now, question. Are you going to disqualify a President Tinubu who has contested an election, declared winner, irrespective of whatever petitions you're bringing left, right, and center? The answer is no. It actually, as a matter of fact, I am not as vast as uh, 
senior advocates of Nigeria. But common sense and common law, it falls on that pre-election issue. It is within the purview of the APC political party. For instance, Amechi contested, Omahe and the rest of them contested with the president. It is their, their duty to challenge the authenticity of whatever credential he submitted at the INEC. Now, when you ask me whether the Supreme Court will or will not ask them whether they had ample time, that is a preliminary issue. See, the Supreme Court is not there to investigate as to whether you have time or not. They want to face the fact which you presented in the lower court so that you don't waste their time. They are not children. They are people who are like uh, judicial ancestors, call them so to say. So when you say that even the, 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 the rules under the Supreme Court rules, you are not even allowed to bring in anything <laughs> before the Supreme Court which you have not canvassed before. So it's actually a, 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 a thing of, uh, uh, how do I call it? Uh, the prerogative well, of the that, Supreme that Court to do or not to. And, and, and let me even tell you what is interesting. The election petition tribunal has just one jurisdiction, simply to determine whether votes were validly casted, results were validly declared, winner was validly declared. They are not there to begin to adjudicate upon somebody forging certificate or discrepancy of certificate and all those things. That's a voyage of Sinbad. That's like uh, trying to bring Nicodemusly come into... Yeah, uh, besides that, the allegation is a very weighty one. Forging. Just make, making the uh, allegations, we're going to the witness where to be present. I mean, the thing is not, it's not a tea party. And those were the things they should have done during the primaries. But and, and they will not even have the locals. Right. Because they are not members of our party. Exactly. Yeah. But with all due respect, I mean, uh, all this media hype. Yeah. Well, with, with all due respect, both of you have very deep knowledge of the law. Um, but it sounds as if you're saying that if there is, and let's just assume for one second that there are anomalies of such weightiness that they could have a material impact on the result of the election and the future of the the sanctity of the presidency of the country. Really what, what, what you're saying is that what I'm trying to establish, let, let me just make the point and, and I'll come to you just in a minute. What I'm trying to establish is that I've heard, I've seen analysts say that this is a question of substantial justice, not about a technicality. And it seems to me that what you're talking about are technicalities. Mm -hmm. As sub, that, that, that according to sort of the analysts, and you're an expert, so you tell me because I am not, if technicality becomes the issue, then it sounds like the Supreme Court is allowing potentially illegality to prevail in its decision Mr. making. Mr. Mojito, sir, I did, do, do you I, agree I, I, with I that did assessment? say from the onset that I would not sit down. No, no, I, I'm not accusing you. No, no, Supreme already Court. you are insinuating that. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you and a if question you already for know clarification. The, and if you already know the answers, there's no point asking No, 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 no. I'm asking you a question no, let, for let clarification. Me say this. Yes. Let me say this. Our judicial system is accusatory in nature. It's not about your feelings, your emotion, mm. or morality. It shouldn't be. Morality is an unruly horse. When you get aside, it takes you to where you don't expect. Mm. What is morally repugnant in some community is acceptable in another community. So we cannot judge any. In fact, may that day never come when judgment will be given on the basis of emotion, mm. public sentiment, and what. Those you call the analyst, who are they? Have they tried back? Passed through this route before. How many cases have they had in, had in, uh, had in their lives? How many? Including those of them who are lawyers who have been pontificating. Some of them cannot even move, move emotion in court. So we know ourselves. The point I'm making here is this the law is very clear. You are making an, a very weighty allegation, which is criminal in nature, that needs proof beyond reasonable doubt. They're not even really thinking to move. Anyway, I don't want to speak much. 
because uh, I dress it up because my, my brother here dressed so much with issue I didn't want to mention. But one we are just waiting for them, let them mm. come. You see, the truth of the matter is that our judicial system is becoming too made driven. It's not done anywhere in the world. And I see people coming on the television, on the radio, maligning the integrity of the judges, abusing them, touching their families, insulating what is not there. So these are the points we are trying to run away from. And that is why, that was why those of you, us who refer to as very senior, senior, senior advocates of Nigeria have decided to refrain from going to the media. Even when you sought to interview us, we declined. At the tribunal, our own team, never, for one day, never granted any interview. For one day. It was a rule. Because that was the ethical thing we should do. But we have others who go, as soon as they finish in court, they go, they, at the, press, the press gallery is waiting for them. We have the pontificate and all, who is, we have not engaging in that. You see, if this one does not touch on the integrity of our clients, I won't be here. Mm. So the point I'm making is that the orders are there, the rules are there, the four orders to be crossed in ordinary civil cases, not even in election petition, which does not make room for what they're asking for. The Electoral Act is very clear, culture is very clear. It's a straight jacket team. You cannot at this stage, but we are waiting for them. Mm. Let's keep our fingers. So, you may have heard that some manner is who are they? And that's the problem I have with some of your uh, uh, brothers and sisters in the media. We, we make making generalized statement. Uh, some people think uh, this will be. Where, where was the census of those people conducted? They will be making generalized statement. People, some people think analysts. Who are those analysts? How many are they? These are the questions that right. should put out okay. your minds. Well, thank you for, for that. Let, let me come to you, uh, Mike Mbanefo, because um, Adeni Akintola raised an important question about criminal charges or criminal allegations that are being mm -hmm. made. Well, what about points. the issue of not being able to file criminal charges against a sitting president because of his immunity. Does that prevail in this instance? Of course. You've already answered the question. How do you want to press a charge against a sitting governor? What about our a section 308? A sitting president. What right. about our section 308? What does it say? It gives it close him with immunity, but the question is that we have not even come to that stage. Mm. There is nothing criminal until it is declared criminal by yeah. the court. No investigation has been done, or the only investigation has been done that has been done is that of the media, that of the uh, uh, wanderers in the, on the street, because I call them wanderers, because anybody who loves the no, nation I, I call them should this, be, this uh, anybody, who loves the the nation, anybody who loves the nation should bear in mind that it should not, it's not about Tinubu, it's not about Tiku, it's not about anybody, it's about the country Nigeria. Yeah. My brother, this same so the issue have been investigated over and over again. Yes, please. We send that into the tribunal. The, the, the letter yeah. written by the U.S. to the Obasanjo made inquiries through the um, um, I, I. Um, United States. Uh, right. And a reply was given. Sure. I, that I, I, can, no can finish, issue. Yeah, finish the point you're making. Yeah, so you, 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 you talk about present charge on who? President, Section 308 of the Constitution, closing with immunity. But fundamentally, under the section I mentioned earlier in the Constitution, it talks about when you can bring such allegation. Mm. The Chicago University writing a love letter to Nigeria or to INEC to, or to anybody. I am very, I'm not being emotional, I'm just being factual. It, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a ridiculous thing. We are indulging in irresponsibility of the highest order. You know when to bring up issues of forgery and what to do when it is ascertained that forgery has happened. The only, you, person be, do it. the only person who's, in whose jurisdiction the issue of forgery should be read should start from INEC. They are the recipients of whatever is gamut of documents they receive. What is the essence of them receiving the document if they are not going to verify it? Are you now, INEC, that you come from your own uh, sleep 
and going to begin to write to Chicago. If you write to Chicago and they say they don't have you, go home and stay with your document. If you, the proper thing for you to do is to write a petition to the Inspector General of Police to investigate the result, being that the Nigerian police is in the legal system mm. of the country. But obviously, if you're challenging the victory of someone yes. at an election. Yes. I mean, you, you have to marshal your evidence, don't you? Uh, when you marshal your evidence, and even if he points at the, uh, uh, if, even if he declares forgery, you have to hold your peace until it's over. Immunity has been invoked. There's nothing you can mm. do about it. And I can tell you, for, for without sounding immodest, articles are attempt, or anybody's attempt, into the credentials of the person of Bola Ahmed Tinubu has to do with the 2026 election, not this election. 2027. 2027 election, right. not this election. They know what they are doing. The politicians are the only ones who are gods unto themselves that they know tomorrow. <laughs> so while they are contesting House of Rep, they are also contesting governor and also contesting senate and also contesting president. So you don't you you, you pity them. Well, I bet you the only doctors who are not living, the only doctors, I mean, you've been the only doctors who are not living the shores of Nigeria so far are the psychiatric doctors, and I think they should make referrals to them. You see, we've been in the system, this being the election pension since 1999. Yeah. So we'll be the group who have been involved since 1999 to date, and we know. The reason why some file petitions just to keep their names in the minds of their supporters, not necessarily to win, to keep their, to keep assuring their supporters that there is still a ray of hope, and we selling. But you take on those cases, do you? What? I beg your pardon. I mean, do you take on those cases? Of course. I mean, it depends on what you tell your lawyer. Mm. Because I've had people blaming um, our colleagues from other side. You don't need to blame a lawyer because this is what you present to your lawyer that your lawyer will present in court. Your lawyer is not going to manufacture evidence for you. Mm. Like my brother here rightly pointed out, I never publish the subscription that we are giving to them. You have ample, within a time frame, within which to make your complaint. And if necessary, Involve the police as well as forge mm. a document. There's a time frame which you wish to do that. So you can't just wake up on the wrong side of the bed one day to say, well, I want to go to Australia to go and finish. Uh, if you are going to make any complaint like this, you should be directed to INET. And there's a time which you wish to do that. And there are people who are competent, who have locals. To do that, it's not even open to everybody, every gentleman. Nari, it's open to only members of the, those parties, and it's a purely pre election matter. Mm. Okay, just very briefly, because we're almost out of time. Is all this clear to you from a legal perspective? Is it all black and white, or are there gray legal areas that you think might lead us into murky waters? There is nothing gray. There is nothing ash. There is nothing black, even. It's clear. And there is nothing strange. There is nothing murky. There is no murky water anywhere. There is no murky water. The, the, the grounds are, like I said, Section 137, Sub 1J. Talks about forgery as one of the grounds. Where were you when they published this stuff? It's just like they keep serving you a process of court. You ignore them. They keep serving. The lower court gives judgment. You go on appeal. They keep serving you. They give you a brief of uh, 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 argument. You didn't file. You got, they got judgment against you. You went to Supreme Court. What were you doing? My brother, we've been passed through this route before. This issue of certificate of I've been tried before. So I've gone up to Supreme Court. What are they talking about? Well, on that note, I want to thank you very much indeed, both of you. Very, very illuminating listening to you um, talk to us about these very weighty matters at the moment. Adeni Akintola is a senior advocate of Nigeria and legal counsel to the APC, and Mike Mbanefo is a constitutional lawyer, and I might add from a pedigree of legal eagles in this country. Thank you very much indeed to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.